Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a great alternative for batteries for your M12 Milwaukee heated gear, all right? They're gonna be smaller, they're gonna have a heck of a lot more power, and best of all, they are way cheaper. And no, I'm not talking about that hokey M12 to M18 adapter. This is a real life hack that's gonna be awesome. All right, folks, let's get into it. All right, so I've had my Milwaukee heated jacket here for about four years, and it came with one of these CP 2.0 batteries, okay? Uh, for the most part, it was fine. Uh, this battery would last me anywhere from about an hour and a half to two hours on the high heat setting on my jacket, okay? Now, I know that there's three different heat settings on this thing, but I'm gonna be honest with you. The low heat setting, you really don't feel it. And the difference between medium and high, it's pretty negligible. So I usually run this thing high all the time. Now, to give you some additional context, I don't wear this thing to work, okay? I literally bought this jacket so that I can watch playoff football in November here, okay? And not freeze my butt off. Uh, so I needed something with a little bit more oomph. So I did end up upgrading to the Milwaukee CP 3.0 battery, and that was a little bit better. I found I could get about three hours on high, okay? But again, if, you know, as a football fan, you know what I'm saying here, three hours is enough to get you through maybe just the game, but not tailgating or, you know, going for a walk afterwards. You're a little short on time there. I was really looking for a more powerful alternative. Now, Milwaukee does have their XC line of M12 batteries, which give you extended runtime. The challenge is, instead of having some Something this size in your pocket it's got this huge bulky piece on the bottom and these ride in your back over here and that thing is just stabbing you the whole time it's not super comfortable my other alternative would have been to go with an M12 to M18 adapter and use the big boy M18 batteries because you can get those in a wide range of capacities and those will last a super long time. But again, the trade-off is then I've got this honking brick of a battery stuck in my back and that's not super comfortable on these. Um, I have seen some alternatives out there where um, companies will release like a combo USB battery pack, but it'll also have the plug-in for a Milwaukee heated jacket and those are okay-ish. And the reason I say that is because a lot of these are no-name battery packs. You really have no idea what kind of quality battery cells are in it. And the other thing too is what voltage is it actually rated at at that capacity? I've seen these ones where they advertise them at 5,000, 10,000 milliamp hours. And to be honest with you, I think you can take that number and cut it in about half. And then you gotta look at what voltage is it rated for at that capacity, because usually they quote you that number at about five volts if you're using the USB plug, okay? In reality, cut that number in half again, and now there you go, okay? So I got to thinking, there's gotta be a better alternative out there. And sure enough, I found it. And that looks like this, okay? This is actually an RC battery, okay? Meant for your radio controlled vehicles, your Traxxas trucks, that sort of stuff. These are pure lithium polymer cells, okay? The particular one that I got here is actually rated at 5,200 milliamp hours. Now again, I never have heard of the brand Z before, okay? Uh, but I looked online at some Amazon reviews, did some Redditing, and, uh, and sure enough, I mean, they seemed like they were a pretty decent middle of the road battery. The best thing is, this CP 3.0 battery that I got here, this for me, Canadian, is 100 bucks, okay? This 5200 milliamp one, a whopping $47. So I said, okay, we gotta give this a shot and see what's up, all right? So first things first, just comparing, you know, physical differences between these two here. You know, you guys can see right off of the hop, um, height-wise, they're about the same. This one's a little bit taller, okay? Um, but in terms of their actual thickness, this one is significantly smaller, okay? It's a much, uh, it's a much more compact battery overall. Um, and I really like that, because one of my big complaints, even with this CP 3.0 or the 2.0, is that that cell just stabs you in the back the whole time, okay? So dimensions wise, this was a lot friendlier, okay? When you look at, when you look at a Milwaukee, one of the compact batteries on its own, they're not super big, okay? If I'm comparing, you know, batteries like this to, to each other here, well, there's not a, <laughs> you know, this one definitely wins. This is a lot smaller. But in reality, you know, you have to put the adapter on to actually make this thing do what it needs to do. And that's where I noticed the big difference. Once I did that, I was like, wow, these things are like half the thickness. Okay. So now I can see what you're saying. Well, how the heck am I supposed to plug this into my jacket? Okay. Right here, I was able to find what's called an XT60 
to DC 5521 adapter, okay? Um, I know a lot of jargon, all right? Uh, the connector on these, on these RC batteries, you can find a ton of different ones out there. You're gonna see these XT60s, you're gonna see Dean's connectors. Um, there's a wide variety of them out there, but the bottom line is if you go with one with the XT60, I know you can find these adapters here. And literally all I do is take this adapter, I plug it on into the battery pack here, and now <laughs> that will actually adapt to my heated jacket and I can plug this thing directly in here, all right? Once I've done that, I can power up the jacket and away you go, I've got juice, okay? So now you're probably wondering, well, how the heck do you go about charging this thing? And fair enough, okay? That is where this connector comes into play and this is a JST XH connector, all right? I know it's a mouthful. Um, what I was able to do was go online, same thing, found one of these RC charger connectors here, and sure enough, it has that appropriate end on it, okay? Um, this was a whopping 15 bucks online. This is one of the cheaper ones, but this connector plugs right into that port, all right? And once I have it plugged into that port, uh, I plug this into the wall and it will charge this battery pack up, okay? Um, so all in all, for the charger, the adapters, the battery pack, I was $87 Canadian out of pocket. Now it's gonna be a lot cheaper for you if you're in the States, but just to give you, you know, a, a rough idea of, of what this all cost me price-wise, okay? Um, what I actually did was a runtime comparison, and I'm gonna show that to you guys now, okay? So very first thing I did was I tested all three of my batteries, my CP 2.0, my 3.0, and the new 5200 milliamp hour battery here, okay? Um, with all three of them running with the jacket on high. Now you're gonna see the CP 2.0 dies at around the hour and 52 minute mark, which is about on par for what I was expecting, okay? Now next up, my CP 3.0 made it to about the two hour and 42 minute mark. Now doing some napkin math here, I expected the 5200 milliamp hour battery to last maybe around the four and a half hour mark. Again, they rate these things at 5200 milliamp hours, but I'm thinking, well, it's a, maybe a no name battery. Maybe I'll get 75, 80% of that capacity realistically. This thing was like the Energizer Bunny. It just kept going and going <laughs> and going. I, had, I ended up shutting the test down at about five hours and 47 minutes because first of all, it was 4.15 a.m. Okay, I didn't expect the test to go that long. Uh, but secondly, I couldn't get over the capacity of the battery. When I took a multimeter to test the voltage to see where I was at, I was at about 9.9 .9 volts, okay? Um, according to the manufacturer of this battery, it can go down to about 9.6 volts before it turns off. So what I believe that means is that the good folks at Z underrated this battery big time. Okay, even though it says 5,200 milliamps on the outside, this thing's probably closer to like 6,500 milliamps, okay? The scary thing is they make an 8,000 milliamp hour version of this that isn't significantly bigger in dimensions than what I got here, okay? Um, the only downside I would say to this particular battery is the fact that with a charger like this, a cheapo charger like this, this battery is gonna charge at 800 milliamp hours, meaning that this battery from dead as rated would take about six and a half hours to charge. In reality, I think you're closer to probably about eight or nine hours to charge it because of the actual capacity. Now, with that said, if, you, if you're into RC cars and you happen to have a Milwaukee jacket, well, you're set because you probably have a charger like this at home already. You can get higher capacity or faster charging versions of this too. But in reality, if you don't have any of the other M12 gear or it's just not comfortable for you to be having that battery pack in here, this is a way better alternative for you. Again, I, I'm sold on these batteries right now. And again, these guys aren't a sponsor or anything like that. I just did my homework, I checked Reddit, I looked online, and I, I've seen battery tests before where everyone advertises, oh, hey, your big hack is getting the, the high capacity M18 battery and that little adapter. In my opinion, this is a way better alternative. These pouch cells pack a wicked punch, okay? So I don't think you can go wrong with that.
So folks, if this video was helpful, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, leaving me a comment below in terms of what you thought of the process. Again, I haven't seen any other videos or posts that had mentioned trying to use a battery and adapter system like this, and I had fantastic with success with it, so I thought, hey, why not let the world know about it, all right? So folks, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.